This is 40K Today. The 40K podcast so important that we had our psychic awakening ages ago. We've been psychically awake since, like, second edition. Hello and welcome to another daily edition of the 40K Today podcast. We're super happy to be back after a nice long weekend. We hope all of our friends in the States enjoyed their Labor Day as much as we did. I'm your host, John Damaris, and it's Tuesday, the 8th of September, and we're going to talk to the man behind the scenes at Cold Open Stories, and we travel to a land unknown to hear all about the Polish meta. You know, it wasn't too long ago we were in danger of losing Cold Open Stories. Lucky for us, the community stepped up and lended a helping hand to help save them. Our very own Steve Joel catches up with Colin to get us the details about what's going on with them. From Cold Open Stories, Colin, thanks so much for joining us again. Wow, what a turnaround over the last couple of months uh, that you guys have seen. Well, you personally in particular. Um, do, you want to oh, take, yeah. do you want to start with, before we get into the exciting news that you've got to share with us, can you maybe take us through a little bit of, a little bit of that? Uh, I don't want to say rags to riches, but certainly a great turnaround for us fans. Well, it's definitely been a, uh, a challenge, and uh, we've also been able to see the, the incredible support and generosity of the community. I mean, uh, we've been running uh, Cold Open Stories for just over a year and uh, have put out different audio dramas, uh, fast fiction contests, and, and short fiction anthologies. And then what had happened really for, for me is just as a result of, of changing times, um, I lost my job, and uh, really the... You know the timing and the way things are it looked like my family and i were gonna you know wind up with complications on, on where to live so uh just a, a major shout out and thanks to to andrew and dan uh, hobby vices and the lonely havoc uh, who set up support and also to you know the entire warhammer community uh good friends over at lorehammer as well as the cold open stories audience everyone came out to to support and uh, just within two short months have been able to turn things back around and now we're firing on all cylinders and we're doing even more. <laughs> really? Ah, so one of my, uh, we, I love the, I love the fan fiction and the fact that it's curated and edited and, and of an enormously high quality, particularly that one tower story was amazing. Um, then, <laughs> but the, I think my favorite part of what you do has been the audio dramas. Uh, I really love them. And you've got another one coming out this week. We do. Uh, so Agtril, the counterfeit blade, is a Eldari story. It actually takes place uh, between uh, the war in heaven, so the ancient Eldari versus their, uh, their the villainous uh, Necron, Necron Tyr, uh, and their star gods. And it uh, kind of uh, pierces the veil of time uh, with the Asuriani, the craft world Eldar in the modern day, uh, or modern for 40k, yeah. uh, trying to uh, to find a way to uh, you know stop the the long uh, the long death, the uh, the dreaded doom of their race. Uh, really? And so part one of that will be coming out on Wednesday, and we have a series of uh, releases coming out uh, for that over the course of the month, and uh, we've partnered with uh, some good friends over at Lost Legion Studios, uh, and we're doing what we call Worlds of the Eldar, and it's kind of a, a, a massive release event, uh, a very inspirational to, to get into it, but uh, it's uh, the release of Ag Trilled Counterfeit Blade, our audio drama. Yeah. Uh, we have the fast fiction contest where uh, people can submit their own stories about Maiden Worlds and Exodite, and that will be included in a Eldari Exodite-themed uh, special anthology release, which will coincide with the world premiere of the animation, The Exodite, which already has two teasers up on YouTube that people can check out, and that's coming from Lost Legion Studios. Tell us about The Exodite uh, and, and what we can expect from that. Is this a... Is this a, a single event or is, a, is it a series of events? How are you going to roll that out? Well, so that's coming from Lost Legion. Uh, they're going to have a, a series of releases. The most that I can say about it is that you're going to have uh, Imperium, Tau, and uh, Eldari all mashing together in a, a rather intense war. Um, the animation's being created by a multinational group of artists. And it's really something fans have been just wowed by the the quality and the the production for that. Something that we had a great alignment with with Cold Open Stories yeah. is just trying to tell great stories, you know, character driven pieces and stuff that has a significant amount of polish for broadcast. I really love that it's that it's all tied in together as well. And uh, man, I can't wait for the anthology. So, the, but the first thing, the first thing that we have to look forward to this week is part one of the. Uh, the audio drama counterfeit which, blade, yep. counterfeit blade, which we're we're really looking forward to, and then if we want to, and we'll include links to this in our show notes, if people want to, and they really should uh, check out the 
the teasers for the animation, which the exit art, which we can't wait for as well. Colin, listen, uh, I'm such a big fan of yours and and the work you do. I'm really excited to see Cold Open Stories back and firing up again and, and just getting great content out there again. It's good for it's good for 40K. It's good for the community. And I'm, I'm really wrapped that you're able to get it done. Well, I, I appreciate that. And really, uh, a, a major shout out goes to to the community for the, the personal support for me and my family, as well as for Cold Open Stories, the volunteer uh, editorial team that we have here. Uh, without people getting involved in you know the creative arts and uh, content creation, none of this would be possible. So if people want to, to be a part of it, hop on over to www.coldopenstories.com. Cold Open Stories is fantastic. So happy to have them back in the saddle and very excited to see where they go. Next up on the program, we find out about a meta that really only surfaces during the WTC. Today's episode of 40K Today is brought to you by Frontline Gaming. Frontline Gaming is a one-stop shop for all your Warhammer hobby needs, discounted products, American-made gaming mats and terrain, and a full line of miniatures painting service and daily hobby content. And this can all be found at FrontlineGaming.org. Welcome back. One of the great parts of doing this podcast is getting to meet people from all over. I got to sit down with Tomek and, my, and Mikkel, I think I said that right, who do a Polish podcast called Contact Lost, and they help me understand how 40K is played in their neck of the woods. All right, 40K Today listeners, we have a very special treat. We've got Tomas and Mikkel both joining us all the way from Poland. They heard our interviews with the Russian folks that we had on, and they thought, you know what, we should talk about Poland, and I'm, I'm super excited about it, and I'm really hoping that this opens the gateway for other countries to reach out and be like, hey, we want to talk, we want to come uh, let it, let all of you guys know all about all about us too. So welcome to the program. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves? Tell us a little bit about your podcast that you guys are doing, and then we'll talk about what's going on in Poland. So yeah, hi, hi everyone. It's really nice to be here. Uh, I'm Tomasz, also known as Tweak. And I'm joined here by Michal, also known as Joker. Yep. Hello, everyone. And thanks, John, for having us. So basically, we figured out that if John uh, invites people from other countries, why not invite someone from Poland? Um, as you probably know, Polish scene and Polish meta is quite strong. We have our Polish national team going to the European championships or European team championships every single year, usually um, placing somewhere in the top three. So yeah, we created a podcast because we thought that it's a niche that you don't really get to hear a lot about Polish players, Polish meta, um, Polish pre preparations for the ETC, etc. cetera. Um, so we thought, okay, let's do something like that. Let's, you know, we can speak English uh, and hopefully we can make it interesting. Yeah, and I think the great part, that, which you were sort of pointing out before we started this, was we're all playing the same game now, right? So we can have like a lot more fruitful conversations because you know in the past, ITC and WTC slash ETC formats were so different that the lists really didn't translate and the, the strategies didn't really translate. I mean, 40K is 40K, don't get me wrong, but you couldn't do a very good direct comparison. And now we all live in the same world, which is pretty cool. Yeah, with the situation in the new edition, it's it's really become an opportunity for us to attack this Western world and the uh, Western 40k. Yeah, that sounded ominous. <laughs> yeah, come get us. <laughs> come get us. We deserve it. So let's let's talk about Poland specifically. You guys do some really cool stuff. Um, how do you guys select your ETC team? You said that was quite a process, right? I mean, yeah, it's it's quite systemic i would say because uh normally you have a bunch of uh tournaments throughout the year that you have to attend um we you call them rtts and gts we call them locals and masters but they are pretty much the same thing and the the qualification whether it's an you know a local um competition or a master competition depends on the amount of players that participate these are usually announced somewhere around the beginning of the year. So each city that wants to organize uh, a tournament has uh, at least one or maybe sometimes two coordinators, and they represent the city um, in the national league. So they, you know, they, they they announce when they would like to organize a tournament, and then uh, a calendar is built so that players can plan a year up front where they want to go and what is going to happen when. And then points from those tournaments are accumulated in the league. So 
uh, on top of that, there, there, there are like local leagues that you can play and you get points for that as well. And at the end of the year, those points are summed up and you have, you know, the roster in the league and uh, the, the rules say that the players from the top three can, be, can become part of the national team. So it's really motivating for people to actually go to those tournaments to play regularly uh, because at the end of the day, uh, they could be selected as uh, part of the national team and go to the ETC and the ESC. Top three, actually, and sorry I think for jumping in, just okay. just so uh, clarify a bit. The top three gets selected automatically, and then the other five players are picked by, uh, let's say, the team managers that we had. Uh, uh, we vote and pick, uh, yeah, by a vote from all the uh, coordinators, let's say, so people who are running the communities and let's say biggest c- cities. And um, yeah, that's so that's how eight players are picked for the team. Cool. So then you guys have, you just, you said something I want to focus on a little bit and kind of just bypass. You just said National League. I think that's really cool. So you guys got a, a nationwide league where you keep track of points, which is separate, but it's, it reminds me of the ITC, which is like a circuit, right? We would call that a circuit. Um, and so I'd like to have you guys back sometime to talk about some of the people on the top of your leaderboard. <laughs> I think that would be really cool. Uh, to get to know some of the Polish players, that kind of thing. Um, why don't you tell us, like, what is 40k like in Poland? Is it? I, and I will say just before we before we get into that, you guys are savage war gamers because in War Machine and Hordes, which is the other world that I was in, uh, the Polish also were always top three in hmm. the WTC, right? So the Polish scene is, I would say, it's quite competitive. Um, every year, uh, the league. If you look at the the roster, there are probably around 300 players who um, who appear in that league and the top 100 top 70 i would say are the ones that you can meet fairly regularly at tournaments um and the top the, the you know the top 10 is very similar every single year but those are usually the players that have been playing for more than 10 years or something like that and everyone knows them everyone knows that they have incredible skill but what every single, um, for example, when there is a, when there are captains of the national team, when they get selected, what they would do, they would usually organize additional events all around the country. They would travel the country and they would meet uh, people who aspire to be on the national team and they would play with them. They would see whether there is, you know, potential, whether they are good material for, uh, for, for candidates or, you know, to be part of the national team. Uh, so it's it's really motivating, and people really know each other well. And they, so yeah, it, it's completely like a circuit, like you you described. It's just you know something local for Poland. It sounds like you guys take the national team very seriously, which I think is really cool. I think that's really really cool. We do because um, if you think about it, the, all the major tournaments that take place, um, they follow the ETC or the WTC rules pack. So, uh, you know, whenever uh, there, there was any sort of tournament, we would play the missions and we would play it the way that the national team does. And also uh, the, the crown jewel of what the competition play that you can have in Poland is something called the uh, uh, national team championships. This is an, an event that happens one a year, and it's like the summary of the in, entire season, where also the awards for the league are, are presented, etc. And this is a team tournament. So this is, uh, you know, the ETC is like an eight-man tournament. It's really difficult to build an eight-man team, um, you know, to have a tournament within the country with teams that are so big. But it, the, the the national team tournament is five-man teams. Uh, and really, this shows who is the best material for um, for the national team. That's cool. How many teams do you guys typically have at those? A joker, do you remember? We organized this last year. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, before eight, uh, it was somewhere around 13 teams. But last year, when we ran it, it was 26 teams. I think it was 130 people that we had at the event. And uh, Wow, that's... That's a good size event because Poland is, you know, it's not a small country, but it's also not a, a super yeah, large country, 40K right? Yeah, forty k isn't that popular as well, so it's uh, it's not that big a community. I mean, 
you usually know all the other people from other cities anyway. Uh, but a really cool thing about the national team championship is also that people who don't usually play competitively also like to come and like you know just enjoy the atmosphere of wargaming, have fun, drink a beer, and play some games. Yeah, it's a proper holiday. It's not just a competition. It's actually a holiday. It's usually a two-day event. So last year when we organized it, we organized it in a in a hotel where people could you know play during the day, sleep. Uh, at night and there there was like an open bar so people could use it etc we had all sorts of sponsors from all around the country and from abroad uh who you know provided awards and there was really a lot of cool stuff to win uh so so yeah so people people are usually attracted by uh, the the prizes yeah but mainly uh, by the possibility to just meet with one, one another to have a drink with one another and then to show some some of their you know competitive skills that they have and we even had a team from russia last year true very cool that's very cool so it sounds to me actually like it's a very similar experience that it is here in the united states i always like to say the first time you go to a, a tournament or an event is for the competition and then all the rest of the times you go back to hang out with your friends so it's like you make friends and it becomes that becomes the point, not necessarily winning. Yeah, the after parties are the <laughs> are the real event you go to. Hot. For some, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to come to give us a little bit of a glimpse of the uh, the Polish scene. And what I'd like to do is have you guys back on here, um, and we'll talk maybe around when you have the team tournament or some other events. And then if you'll send me a link to your podcast, I'll definitely put it in the show notes. You guys should check it out at least if you want to get an idea of what's going on in Poland. I think that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if you have time and if you want to check it out, then try uh, searching for Contact Lost either in uh, on, on YouTube. I, we're now on Spotify, iTunes, and so on. So Contact Lost podcast. If you want to find out something more about the Polish meta, then uh, yeah, feel more than invited to. As always, there will be a link to their podcast in the show notes. You should check it out if you want to learn about a very interesting meta of uh, some pretty good players. Those Polish know how to uh, put boot to butt, if you know what I mean. All right, who's ready for the catchiest jingle in all of 40K? It's the, the model of the day, the, the model of the day, the, the model of the day. Today's model of the day was submitted through our 40K Today hashtag on Instagram by our very own Tanya Gates, also known as the War Mistress. Tanya has a very realistic painting style that is full of clean highlights and interesting colors. This week we check out some of her fiends of Flanesh, and let me tell you, they are gorgeous. I love the different hues of purple lending to a very nice theme. The red lungs provide a great contrast, and the bases are awesome, full of static grass and lots of stones. They look great. Now, if you have a model that we should feature on the show, or you've seen a model that should be featured on the show, let us know with our hashtag on Instagram, 40k, the number 2, D-A-Y, or toss us a message to our Facebook. We take submissions either way. And that's it for today. Thanks so much for joining us. A big thanks to our content producer, Alex Boehner, and our social media superstar, Tanya Gates. And as always, our technical producer, Seamus Ronan, for all their hard work once again in putting the program together. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, for Steve Joel and Paul Murphy, I'm John Damaris, and that's what's happening in 40K Today.